Howdy guys. All right, so in this video, what I wanted to do is I wanted to cover uh, the different ways you can import models. Uh, and this is really just for importing models so you can work on the models uh, themselves. So I wanted to go through the process inside of Houdini um, to import an FBX model a couple different ways, um, how to import all the textures and get it hooked up with material. Uh, that way you can uh, display it inside of the scene view here inside of Houdini. All right, so um, I've gone ahead and I've already uh, taken a model uh, from one of the Indie Pixel Asset Packs, the uh, military characters. And what I want to do is I want to import that FBX model, just so we can take a look at, you know, the most basic way to do this. So I'm going to come up here to File, and we're going to import a Filmbox FBX. All right. And so this opens up the FBX import options right here. And now you have, you know, your standard options for FBX you can import cameras, geometry, animation, materials, lights. So if you don't want any of those particular components of the FBX file, you can always check them off, right? So uh, let's go and actually open up that file. So I put it on the desktop. We have our soldier model here. So I'm just going to select my FBX model, hit accept, and I'm going to leave everything at default for now. Okay, so I'm going to hit import. All right, and so if I hit spacebar G on the keyboard, it'll frame that selection. And there we go. We have our Indie Pixel Soldier right here. All right, and if I hit Shift W, I can turn on the wireframe. You can see it comes in all triangulated. All right, and uh, what I want to do is just open up this subnetwork. So you notice that when you import an FBX using this particular um, format or technique right right here, it actually puts it all inside of a subnetwork. All right, and this makes it so you can actually import, you know, the rig. If you have a joint set up in this, all the skinning information will come through uh, that. And so what we get inside of that subnetwork is a geometry node and a material network. Now, if you had gone and let's actually pop this back open over here. If you'd gone and turned off materials or animation, uh, joints and skin, lights, cameras, it wouldn't import that. It wouldn't create this material node right here. Okay. So we cancel that out and let's jump into this uh, geometry node and you can see that we have a file node and it's literally just gone and imported the FBX file right here. Okay, cool. So that's how you get that particular model in. Uh, you could also just do it uh, yourself so you can go and drop down a file node. So in Houdini 17 and 17.5, you can now just type in file and a geometry node will be created for you and a file node will be placed inside of that. So what I can do is I can just go and find my FBX file. I don't have to go and use this, especially if I know that I'm just working with geometry and it's not rigged or anything. And I can go and select that FBX file and there you go. Very cool. Now we have that model again. All right. So let me jump up and out using the U key on the keyboard. And I'm just going to actually delete our sub network. All right. Because what I want to do now is I want to walk you guys through the process of uh, importing the textures and setting up the material. So let me turn off our wireframe view there by hitting Shift W. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this the soldier model. All right, just give it a name. And here's our file. Now what you can do just to make sure that this model uh, is actually included inside of this hip file is you can go and you can lock it. And that basically says, okay, we are baking the geometry into this node. So even if the geometry the source file changes. The model here in Houdini won't. So you can uh, lock it so you get different versions or let's just say you really want to keep this particular version of this model. So you can lock it so you're safe. All right, so uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to set up the materials for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and utilize the new uh, game dev material. So you need to install the game dev tools uh, to have this particular node or HDA included in your Houdini. All right, so I highly recommend doing that because it really speeds up the process. I'll show how to do this manually here in just a bit. Uh, but I wanted to cover this particular node because it basically uh, removes the need to create all these nodes ourselves. Okay, so uh, what I want to do is I want to come up here and I'm actually going to switch from the principal shader to our game dev PBR because all my textures are set up for PBR. And um, for the albedo, that's our base color. All right, so I'm gonna hit this use texture checkbox. And I'm gonna go into the textures folder that came with that model. 
and I'm going to select the diffuse. And voila, we now have our model textured. Very cool. All right, we can also come in here and we can change, you know, the reflectivity, the index of refraction here, our roughness, everything like that. Um, but what I want to do is actually use the texture. So I have the metallic texture here. And we can invert the roughness to get different effects. That looks correct. It actually looks a little too sharp. And that's just because that guy is inverse there. There we go. Cool. Now we have our roughness. This guy doesn't really have a lot of variation in that roughness there. And then finally, we have the normal map. So I'm going to come into enable the normal map here and select the soldier normal. And there we go. We now have a normal map. And I would have to go and add some lights to this to make it a little bit more appealing there. So what we can do is we can uh, drop down a light like so. And we can come up here and we can go into our perspective. We can set the view. Try that one more time there. Uh, we want to set it to our light. And actually, I think it's in here. Yeah, look through light, like one. So you want to go to the camera selection, look through light, select the current light, and then lock your view. So that way we can position our light where we want it. So wherever I'm moving this view now is where the, the light is actually looking. And I want to switch that to a distant light. There we go. So now we've got this guy all lit up. And we can go and copy that. And you can go position it so it gets a nice bounce light. So let's lock that again. And let me actually redo that again there. All right. So look through light. H light 2. We're going to lock that there. And let me actually get out of that for a second. All right, so. All right, so let's position this light one more time now. So I'm going to go to H-Light 2. I'm going to lock the view. And I'm looking for the character. And there's the character right there. It's actually drawing weird. So let's just put our lighting onto this guy. And we'll try to position it something like that. Cool. So let's unlock it. And let's go back to our perspective. There we go. So what I can do now is just change the intensity on this light. We actually need to turn our lighting on. There we go. We can change the intensity on that light. Maybe give this guy a little bit more of blue. Play around with that a little bit more. Maybe make it a little bit brighter. Yeah, something like that would be cool. Uh, you can go and play with that for, for days, really. All right, so now we have our normal map, our diffuse map, or base color, and our metallic roughness all set up. Awesome. So let's say I wanted to go and do that manually. So what I want to do, I'm basically just going to be uh, redoing what they have already provided us in this SOP Quick Material node. All right. Uh, I'm going to drop down a mat net. So we want to do a material network. All right. Very cool. And we're going to need one other node, and that's a material node, because we've got to hook that material network up to this material. All right. So you can see now we've got our Fong lighting all set and ready to go. So in here, what I want to do is drop down a principal shader. And let me do that one more time. So let's do a principal shader. And here you'll find all those same... Uh, values. All right, so we have our base color, but you can also go up to our textures and say for the base color, you want to use the texture, and for the roughness, you want to use the texture, and then the normal map is all the way over here. So you just enable that. So with that, we're good to go. So let's go and assign the albedo first, or base color. So let's go and select our diffuse, and let's hop up and out of our material network now. So I'm going to jump out. And let's make sure that we actually assign the material, that principal shader that's inside of this material network, to our material over here. So what I want to do is I want to go and find that. So I just go hit this little button right here and then navigate until we get to that principal shader. All right. 
And for some reason, every so often, it doesn't want to pick up the uh, texture. So I'm just going to go and um, reassign it. I need to actually open that up. And there you go. Um, now it's finally working. Sometimes you have to actually jump up and out and then back in, I've noticed. Um, sometimes when you have multiple materials like this, this particular node right here, it starts to override what's happening here. I think it's a bug, but uh, just uh, either cycle your lighting like so, and it'll tend to kick it on. You can also come up to, I believe it's the render button and say update textures, and that should update all your materials as well. All right, so uh, now I can get rid of this guy because we're just doing it ourselves, basically. Uh, I also want to note that there is the game dev uh, PBR shader here as well, so you can just make it on your own. All right, and it's basically the same as what's in that node that comes with the game dev tools. All right, and so here is our principal shader, and what we want to do is we can hook up our uh, roughness. So let's get that metallic, and I believe the roughness in this case is in the alpha. So luminance will be fine for that. Yep, already working. Cool. So let's go to the normal. And let's get our normal. There we go. Very cool. I have to flip the Y. That looks fine. That looks fine. That looks correct, I should say. Yep. All right. Very cool. So that is how we go and set all that stuff up. So the last thing I really want to show uh, for importing stuff is the cop network. So let's go into our image context, our compositing context here. And um, I'm going to actually switch over to the composite view itself. All right. So that just takes me into this comp one that's created by default. And so if I wanted to import a texture into Houdini, it's totally possible and do some sort of modification like we do with Photoshop or Substance Designer. So let's just walk through something very basic. I'm just going to import our texture and do some levels adjustments. How about that? Uh, so let's go and say we're going to drop down a file node. All right. So here's our file node inside of our cop context. All right. So you can navigate around basically the same way as you navigate around the scene view. Hold down the middle mouse button uh, to pan. Uh, hold down the right mouse button to zoom in and out. And the left mouse button is just for inspecting pixel values. Okay. So let's load up our texture. Let's get the uh, diffuse texture here. There we go. You can also use spacebar G to, to frame it. So it get, you get a one to one pixel size. All right, so there we go. Now we have our texture and you can come into these little buttons here and look at all the different channels. All right, very cool. Uh, we can also just drop down a levels node, just like Photoshop and we can adjust the levels so you just need to put the little blue display flag on just like any any of the other sops and we can go to the output levels and we can you know pull it down or brighten it up or we can add some contrast to that stuff there we go very cool all right, and then let's say you're happy with that and you wanted to re-export it. You just use that ROP file output right here. And just like we talked about in the exporting stuff video, you can go and just set this to current frame and set your output picture path and just hit render and you'll have a new texture. Cool. All right, so with that, I am going to close out this video. And uh, hopefully that helps some of you guys with importing stuff. I should also note before I go, um, that inside of this file node here, you can also load up OBJs, um, DXFs, STLs, just about any geometry format um, out there. There's quite a few. So I uh, just wanted to make a note of that. All right, guys. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you in a bit.